Yo, what's up? Um, yeah, I'm gonna just um, produce some music. I got the idea that might be pretty interesting if we will come up with some proper arrangement. I'm fine, thank you. Hope you oh. <coughs> hope you're good too. Um, yeah, let's kick things off. So I'm just finishing the melody right now. Um, yeah, can, can you help me to adjust everything? Uh, can you tell me if my voice is too loud or, uh, or not? Comparing to the signal from the sequencer. Yeah, I'm gonna be checking the uh, chat here from time to time. Oh, good for you, man. I'm kind of in the middle uh, of things with coronavirus right now. Uh, it's just, well, elevating with each day. But I hope uh, the like the shittiest time won't be... Uh, well, I, I, I just hope that the shittiest time is kind of already here and the thing's gonna be uh, better and better for all of us uh, from now on. Yeah, cool, let's start. Uh, people will come up slowly. Also, uh, this is gonna be available as a video here on YouTube, so um, you can uh, re-watch that later or whatever. I think that's gonna be part one. If things are gonna uh, go well, I will definitely be up for the part two, but that will, mm, we will see that later. Yeah. Uh, so the idea is here. It's not finished. I was just uh, <laughs> I was just at, at the kitchen and something just like a glimpse of the idea uh, started to play in my head. And since uh, things in in head is not that uh, let's say good uh, when you're actually playing that, recording that, you are obviously adjusting that. So that's what I'm doing right now. It was sounding a little bit different, but uh, later. Well, uh, I kind of love what's coming right now. So I think I'm gonna use the uh, Moog Sub 37 as a uh, as an instrument for the main melody. Um, but well, since it has the librarian, aka editor, as the VST, you will be seeing what I'm doing with that. So I will be actually uh, playing around with the hardware Moog. But you will see all the uh, everything on screen uh, here. Let me do that real fast right now. So, uh, so that that was the wrong one. So, I love this one. I'm doing lots of stuff using Moog Sub Thirty Seven, and that's probably one of my best synthesizers I ever had. Um, it's actually um, this one as well as my Matrix Brute. Arturia, but I don't think I'm gonna be using that tonight uh, or today depends on where you are right now Because you won't be able to see uh, what I'm doing with that first of all and another thing is uh, I don't want to reroute everything right now. Uh, I don't have multi input uh, audio card at the moment so every time I'm switching uh, Synthesizers I have to manually uh, replug all the audio cables and stuff like that which is freaking me out. Uh, also, yeah, I'm gonna be checking uh, chat from time to time, as I said before. Yes, that's Studio One 4. Uh, I love this one. Uh, very comfortable. Uh, the workflow is amazing. Like everything here is uh, made with this uh, drag and drop thing, as you will be uh, seeing a lot today. Um, yeah, let's start. Let's start. Uh, less talking, more music here. Um, oh, I, I don't think I'm gonna be like talking too much uh, since we're here not for my uh, <clears throat> shitty English. <laughs> so yeah, let's just kick in with the music. So the idea is here. Let me finish that and then uh, we will have some kind of idea what to do next about it. <laughs> So uh, this one, like the Fatty Soul, is just the serum, and uh, it it actually sounded sounding like that because I just need to hear the function, like the bass 
note of the chords I'm going to be using as the progression. So uh, why is that so <laughs> noisy and loud and farty? Uh, that's because I will be able to hear that more clearly. Uh, if you're, well, here's the trick. If you're uh, making this progression bottom note with an actual bass sound, you can uh, miss the proper note like half a uh, semitone, that kind of stuff. You won't be able to hear that, especially if you're uh, listening to that too loud. So that's why um, that's why I'm using just the simple souls here, uh, which is not very bass-ish. Yet uh, I'm clearly hearing the tone because I don't want to uh, press the wrong knob. I can just uh, make it a little bit quieter so it won't be annoying us too much. So this one is serum as well. Uh, and I will re uh, I will actually make a preset for that using sub 37 a little bit later, then some post processing uh, and we will take it from there. Yes, Cubase exactly. Uh, well, the uh, the story behind me using Studio One is pretty simple. Uh, I just kind of <laughs> lost my USB dongle while uh, I was in London like maybe seven years ago or something and since uh, I can't uh, recover that real fast because uh, probably I had to order new one like straight from Germany and that will literally take weeks and uh, there was a lot of works to do so uh, someone told me that there is this Studio One thing which is pretty much the same yet lighter, faster and made for some very modern solutions and ways of uh, producing music. Uh, Cubase is, well, uh, well, maybe I'm wrong because I haven't used that since version 5, but at version 5 and the versions before, uh, I had the feeling that it's mostly to, I don't know, maybe multi-record some, uh, I don't know, rock band, uh, that kind of stuff, like very old school approach, which is not something I want to uh have while i'm producing music so yeah let's get back to this stuff So the melody is made from two parts uh, and the main idea and the main chords are here. We will actually make a real chords out of it just a little bit later. But I want to uh, have this one as the main one as well as this one is going to be some kind of a variation of the first one. Um, first of all, this one goes here and then uh, all these cascade transition kind of notes are going to be changed so it won't be sounding too boring. with this one it's too bassy and I don't clearly hear the tone so that's why I hesitate from time to time but uh, well whatever I'll, I'll, I'll just make it through yeah this one's gonna be sounding way better With 
this one we can go like that this sounds a little bit weird I uh, need to readjust this one as well So uh, what I'm doing is, I, when I don't clearly hear what's going on, you can easily just uh, make that few octaves up and you will be hearing tone way better than before. That, that could be the octave or maybe decima, like it's the octave plus uh, third. Yeah, that's the decima and that sounds, well, I don't think that there's a lot of difference actually, but uh, octave is too simple. Uh, sometimes the simplicity is the good thing, uh, but sometimes, uh, well, that should be a little bit more special, let's say. Uh, producing music is a very interesting thing. Uh, the simple, simplest solution is the best solution. On the other hand, the devil uh, is in the details. So it sounds like it's, uh, well, kind of, uh, well, these two sayings doesn't work together well, but if you will think th it through a little bit more, uh, you will realize it's not. So yes, here. What's with the chords and the bass note, bottom note? Uh, okay, the last one sounded weird. Also, uh, I know that this progression sounds just a little bit, uh, well, maybe not just a little bit, but anyway, uh, as sweet harmony, <laughs> the chord progression. Uh, but, well, first of all, everything was like written before already, like every possible uh, chord progression you can imagine, uh, which is also sounding good, uh, was already written by someone. Uh, and, the th and things which makes music special nowadays is the arrangement, the vibe, the idea, uh, the presets, and that kind of stuff. So if you got the proper vibe, you can easily like uh, do something which sounds similar to something you heard before. Um, I'm just trying to catch the proper balance in between of the music, which is sounding comfortable for us, but like bringing something else into it as well. Um, since I'm not a genius or something, uh, I just know my stuff well uh that's the solutions and the ideas i'm using like on my daily basis while i'm working uh with music uh okay some fast cascade stuff Okay, now we can finally <laughs> lose this one. Um, not, well, not just lose this one, but turn it off. By the way, fun fact is that this preset is the main riff on my remix uh, for, for the Midnight Kids. Uh, it was like heavily uh, post-processed as well as like uh, I did lots of changes on it but the original one was this one it's the uh, factory base D base one this one 
you can actually already hear that. What I did was uh, using some heavy compression as well as reverb, like the short one, really short one, because you don't want to uh, push that like far from the listener, and that's what usually reverb does. Uh, so yeah, the idea was to compress that heavily after the reverb was applied, and that's the trick uh, which can give you a lot of space in your tracks uh not making that too fluffy like keeping that in your face kind of stuff um yeah so i think it we're ready to uh switch the mooc switch it to the mooc uh but before i think i'll probably make some really simple like a wrist bass to have the bottom and uh, so we can like keep this idea of the progression alive yet it won't be very like obvious so what I'm gonna do is I'm just uh, taking two oscillators with these saws, regular ones, and this one's gonna be uh, just a slightly, slightly pitched down, just a little bit like minus 15 cents, and same thing goes to this one, but uh, the difference is it's going like to be to be pitched up. Filter for both of them, and you got your result very easy. Uh, also, if you don't want to have lots of like buzzy stuff, uh, octave per uh, decibel per octave can be uh, something like that. If you want to make it wider, just add a few notes here and don't detune that too much. Uh, as a layer uh, for the bass, like the body of the bass, I'm using that a lot. Uh, literally in every track I have, I guess, for the last year or something because it's not obvious at all, yet it gives the idea of the uh, like very round-ish bass, because obviously you can't uh, do that with the sub-bass, right? You have to keep that mono. Um, this one can be very, very wide, uh, providing you will cut off the uh, low frequencies, obviously those which is gonna be occupied by your sub-bass. Um, yeah, so let's see. How should I put in the sub 37? Yes, dude, for the night has this one as well. Um, yeah, okay, let's go. New instrument, it, so yeah, it's already here. So let's just switch that to sub 37. Cool. Uh, I need to turn that off from the console here and put it straight to the sequencer. I got this weird glitch. Uh, the UAD console started to um, starting to to too long. Like it's maybe glitching or something. I don't know. But I I had to wait for like five, six, seven seconds before it's actually uh, <coughs> fully functioning uh hasn't seen that kind of stuff before whatever so the mono input obviously uh because sub 37 is a mono synth it has like just the mono out so this one and that was the right i guess yeah yeah here it goes <laughs> Yeah, I had to find the proper note because there is no panic buttons on this sense uh, anymore. Uh, but the problem is still there. I'm really, really looking forward to this MIDI 2.0 to be everywhere because, uh, like, fun fact, uh, we were using MIDI 1.0 uh, for like more than a more than a 30 years, uh, and that's literally the first update it ever ever received. For the whole history of MIDI, so I'm really looking forward because uh, the rumors are there won't be lots of stuff like that. Also, like more precise clock sync. Uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, uh, it won't affect all the synths that was used, uh, well, built before, developed before. But inside the sequencers, uh, that might well get rid to well, whatever. I mean. 
I think some of these glitches and errors and stuff like that will disappear. Uh, but that's just my hopes. We'll see. So what I'm gonna do before uh, proceed with this one, I'm gonna add a bus specially for uh, sub 37, which is gonna be sub MIDI sub audio, and that's gonna be yeah packed as a folder. Luke. So yeah, uh, I'm doing the bus especially for uh, this one because the bus is gonna be uh, stereo. So all the processing I'm gonna be applying on that is gonna be in stereo as well. Yes, 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 yes. That what that was announced during the NAM. It's easy to Google actually. There's a lot of uh, presentations, explainers, and stuff like that about it. I wasn't. Uh, digging uh, about it too much, so so I'm not the guy who will explain everything about it like in depth. So uh, yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna initialize the preset, and now you'll be able to see everything I'm twitching here. But I will be touching an actual sub-37 to have the results. For, for some reason uh, you can't see the changes here which is weird let me try another version uh, stuff like that happens from time to time uh, okay that's weird I don't think I had that before Maybe I was just lucky, uh, and I always picked the right installment of that one. Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. It usually shows everything real fast, like with no latency at all. Obviously, providing you don't have anything here in the project, which is giving you this additional latency and stuff. But... Uh, Well, uh, I will fix this later, as for now, um, yeah, I'm just gonna be using this one, so you will see in everything here. So yeah, let's make some nice smooth uh, roll analog lead for this one. I'm a huge fan of souls, I love them, that's my favorite waveform, I'm using that a lot, and there is a huge diversity of things you can do just using those, but we will definitely try some other ideas as well. So uh, yeah, let's go. Thank you. 
you can never go wrong with some fifths inside that. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of fifth. You can literally probably hear those in every track I produce. It's gonna be the main one or just some support track like sequence or something, but I'm doing that anyway. Yeah, we can uh, try this one for starter, then we'll see. Yeah, okay, so next thing I'm gonna do them a little bit more or less dry, maybe using some of those. Yeah, huge, huge, huge shout out to Dave Dresden from G Absolutely, I love those. Um, but uh, before before uh, the delay, I'm gonna apply. There is this. Uh, sorry, this int is gonna be uh, useful only for the Mac users. But uh, for some weird reason, I have the theory that it's coming with uh, GarageBand or something. Uh, you have some nice set of the plugins, which is uh, which is there like the moment you install the blank macOS. So uh, it doesn't have have its own um, interface. So you're gonna be seeing that uh, like differently in different doll DAW. But here it uses the uh, very nice knobs, triggers, and stuff. Uh, depends on the plugin. Uh, from Studio One, obviously. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just give it a tiny little bit feel of the space because uh, since this is very like raw analog synth mono, um, it doesn't sound very organic. So I have to give it a feeling that that is some actual room. Um, see like one percent one percent and the difference is amazing also i'm gonna be uh compressing that no still not working well, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so the next one's gonna be uh, the chords, and I, I think I'm gonna use some weird techniques just uh, to make it more interesting. I don't use the uh, actual like subtractive synthesizers or whatever wavetables to make the pads. 
I love using some uh, granular uh, engines like the uh, the one Omnisphere has is simply brilliant, Jesus. Uh, so let's try something with that. First of all, uh, the notes, obviously, the uh, voices inside the chords and that kind of stuff. So um, just let's take something. Um, I'm using piano for that, actually. And uh, I won't be playing the MIDI keyboard, so uh, you will be seeing everything I'm doing there as well and while it's loading um, Yeah, yeah, of course there is something you can use on Windows as well. I love the uh, uh, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see Yeah, actually, I'm a huge fan of um, <laughs> No, not this one effects for the rooms and that kind of stuff it can be spacey too like very uh huge uh, spaces hollywood and that kind of stuff but uh arts acoustic reverb this one i will use that later uh here is the interface and you can use that to emulate some something um like the room the big small or whatever as well as make everything very sci-fi ish as well with this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a uh, few things on Russian, sorry. Привет, ребята, извиняюсь, у нас сегодня очень много народу со всего мира, потому что все сидят дома. По этой причине я буду в основном лупить по-английски. Да, и штука в том, что нас здесь только одна нация, а их хрен знает сколько. Поэтому, да, спасибо большое, вижу, спасибо за хорошего стрима. Вот, мы там английский знаем, а они вот русские нет, поэтому продолжаем. Yeah, um, okay, let's go. So, I already have this one as the bottom note of the chords. Yeah. <coughs> this preset here, Pure Bliss, I love that so much. Sounds amazing. This one is my preset to go with every track I'm using piano in. Okay, this is gonna be uh, the bass note, as I said before. So I'm gonna double that octave up and build everything from here. Uh, that's too loud. Wow. So, uh, what can I do? Uh, let me see, uh, let me show you the notes. You will be able to see the actual uh, notes here. It's gonna be easier to uh, follow what's going on here. So yeah, um, obviously the most stupidest and uh, obvious way uh, is to make a simple like minor chord, which is gonna be. Uh, but we're not doing that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse uh, the uh, sequence of the notes here in chord first of all I'm gonna drop this one octave down and that's gonna be to grew like gloomy so octave up for that like for the whole construction This one's tricky because this is gonna be the major chord. Thank you. 
this one's gonna be a little different maybe i will uh, make some variations of the chords here as well let's just finish the raw skeleton <laughs> So uh, obviously I won't be using piano like that uh, with the rest of the uh, arrangement, but now we can actually hear the vibe of the uh, idea here. And if it's uh, weird, wrong, or just, well, something we don't dig, we will be uh, adjusting the chord progression to find the proper result for that. Yeah, th there is this slight desync and that's happening because of the latency. I'm not using the direct input. I used all these uh, post-processing, not uh, after I actually recorded the audio from synthesizer. So that's why we have this latency stuff and we're gonna compensate that easily, uh, but like using ear and nothing else. minus 35 milliseconds sounds okay to me but that's gonna be changing every time I'm gonna be using uh, some other uh, inserts here on the channel or here on the audio one so uh, or <laughs> actually any other channel uh, in the project so kind of stuff <laughs> sorry uh, yeah a little bit less of this fifth inside the sub 37 which is uh, well not quite out of tune but sounds a little bit weird so which one was that uh, first or second oscillator uh, yeah this one so I'm gonna just uh, lower the volume on this oscillator to here. God, I love it. This sense, it, it's amazing. So yeah, let's proceed. Uh, I'm gonna do some nice granular uh, texture out of this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna just play around with the chords just a little bit more um, to see if there is some ways to make it a little bit more dirty or special um, yeah one I like this one it gives this uh, seventh uh, kind of chord which is gonna be um, okay here's the trick uh, in any key you can imagine uh, I I'm not quite sure if I can explain that in English uh, like clear but uh, in Russian school of uh, classical music, this thing is called the steps, uh, like in the letter, that kind of steps. So if we are, for instance, in A minor, uh, you will obviously uh, 
get the notes uh, inside the key, which it won't be uh, the black ones, right? Like. So this is gonna be the first one. Step in the letter, second, third, etc., uh, etc. Et so the seventh st the step here, which is gonna be G, this one, is gonna be working with literally every uh, chord you can imagine in your progression. So here we have uh, this one, which is gonna be. Uh, I will always forgetting this. Uh, this gonna this is gonna be sharp if we're saying this is D sharp then the E is gonna be uh, diminished or ah, I, I forgot I forget sorry so uh, here it's gonna be uh, this one C sharp that's gonna be the seventh step so see it's working with literally every any chord That's why you can easily use this note inside your chords to make that a little bit more complex, just a tiny a little bit more dirty, if you want that. Um... <laughs> yes, Arthur, I already said that, I already uh, confessed that this sounds like the Sweet Harmony and yes, this annoying person who's pointing me that I'm ripping off some others uh, chord progression is the guy behind literally every beautiful vocals uh, I had on my tracks for the last few years. We already uh, made amazing follow-up for, for the night. Uh, this guy sing for the night as well, which is so the follow-up is going to be out on Juno Beats this summer. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this. And we are already working on some other tracks as well. Uh, yeah, we are almost done with uh, with this mega collaboration we did with Andy Moore, uh, Marcus Schosso from Garden State, uh, Dave Dresden from Gabriel Dresden, me and Arthur Moka here. So there's literally six person on one single track, which is amazing. I love that one. Uh, and well obviously it's coming up slowly like shaping real slow because uh, too many people but uh, the results is very very interesting because every person behind the track made some tiny little bit bits and pieces which like determines the sound uh, of each, every uh, well each of us so that's why it sounds interesting I can't say that that's a huge commercial shit or something uh, but uh, I kind of love that and it's working well on the dance floor as well I played that on a, at a state of trance uh, well months with something ago and yeah I love that <laughs> yeah I, I read the, the that article about those guys uh... <laughs> So what are we gonna do next? Let's make some very nice granular texture, but before that I'm gonna uh, just play these chords using some well arpeggiated something uh, and the Omnisphere itself is one of the coolest things you can use for that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just jump straight to Arp plus BPM folder here and just play around with uh, some of the presets I'm pointing, uh, noting uh, some of those which sounds nice for me but let's skip those and find something new and this one's obviously not the one I'm gonna use same goes to this one holy <clears throat> sorry <laughs> um, yeah let's narrow the list just a tiny little bit by using this uh, browser here, childlike. How the fel hell you can describe some sound like a childlike? Peaceful. That's what I am feeling right now. I am very, very peaceful. Which is not happening really often with me. Living in Russia is not a peaceful state of mind. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, uh, keeping in the head that we are gonna be using granular uh, engine to actually uh, make this one as a like whole tight tight texture. This one might work. It sounds like, well, this this <laughs> this sounds like a child like, <laughs> but uh, well. Maybe that will work. We will experiment and see. Uh, also, one of my favorite libraries to date here in contact is... Uh, da -da 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 -da, one second, I'm gonna find... Yes, Mullet Flux. Amazing stuff. Very organic. I'm trying to combine like the organic things, like marimbas or whatever, some live instruments with this role animalistic uh mono synths that that's some kind of a uh well idea behind my music recently so uh let's see and it's pretty heavy so we're gonna uh have to wait <laughs> for that to load but that will happen soon enough i hope so yeah i don't have lots of money to buy some huge ssds they are expensive as fuck so uh no sir uh all of these like huge libraries are situated on the regular hdd i has i have um and that's not even inside of my computer that's usb 3.0 uh but uh well actually mm, it's not that bad i mean i have to wait for them to to be loaded uh same goes to the omnisphere presets and the whole spectrosonic con content as well as my uh well, wave libraries like uh, drums and stuff, but w when it's loaded, everything's fine. I mean, uh, RAM does its job pretty well. Yes, yes, thank you so much. I already made uh, like five or six tracks, uh, which is gonna be out uh, in 2020. But uh, yeah, sky's the limit is not the limit. <laughs> Infinity and beyond. So yeah, oh, while I have, uh, that's actually the first time I really want to produce some new music since uh, State of Trance. For some weird reason, I was very, uh, well, let's say I was very tired uh, because I was forcing myself to finish all this music you were uh, hearing at, at my set of the state of trance and there were like uh, literally half of the set with IDs and stuff which is not out yet I wanted I wanted to make that as like much exclusive uh, as I could for you so I kind of over uh, worked just a little bit so uh, I gave myself a little break and slowly getting into it again now what the hell yeah thanks god soft 37 has the panic button <laughs> oh by the way that's gonna be a good idea to store the preset if something will crash or uh well something like that we will be able to recover that easily okay so that's gonna be isolation lead yeah okay this one's loaded let's see it's already beautiful uh but you can well find anything for like any taste here in the browser uh, let's just uh, I, I won't be programming the sequencer like internal sequencer by myself here uh, now because that's not that important uh, as a main leads we're using so uh, yeah yeah beautiful again keep in mind that this is gonna be completely destroyed by granular engine anyway I just wanted to find some uh, solutions which is not gonna be dirty uh, voices wise so this one's working fine so let's go with this one um, yeah so what are we having right now is this
So, uh, speaking of piano, uh, since it's, uh, well, obviously everyone knows how piano works. It's the hammers which hits the string and then the string uh, amplifies back and forth and then the uh, amplitude is going like down and then you can't hear that anymore. So uh, all these sustained pedals and stuff, I don't want to uh, do that right now, uh, like uh, automation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this one. This is my favorite uh, compressor ever. Basically, well, technically it's limiting amplifier, but who cares? <laughs> so, uh, and I'm gonna intentionally over compress this one to make that like uh, lose its dynamic. So since we don't have this, like the first impulses and then the body slowly fading out, uh, we are gonna be uh, able to use that as a granular uh, texture long enough not to lose its energy. So yeah. <laughs> background noise and stuff uh, I don't mind it uh, inside the granular texture every weird uh, shade of the sound is gonna do its job uh, just fine so I'm not bothering with this one uh, now another one uh, just a regular compressor to equalize the dynamics of the all three uh, instruments here as well and I can either take the glue compressor but I'm too lazy to find that right now so I'm just taking this one which is a simplest compressor like you can find <laughs> Because if you will try to check that out uh, with uh, some, um, what was the name of that stuff? Should I forget? Oh yeah, this one. If you will check the wave of the whole structure without the compressor, you will see that it has like the first clicks, which uh, is coming from piano because of this one. Bang. So this is something we don't want to have inside. So this one's gonna help us getting rid of it. See, no weird clicks anymore. And we're ready to make the uh, the fade file, which is gonna be isolated. Everything is so isolated nowadays, isn't it? Isolated gram. <laughs> yeah, isolate your grams. Uh, yeah, wave file, okay, let's go. <laughs> да, обязательно, Дима, привет, стрим обязательно останется, я, в общем, сделаю все возможное. Yes, thanks, man. You already told me, but every time is like the first one, <laughs> so keep them coming. <laughs> okay, so the next thing, well, I can basically delete these, uh, but I will keep them here just for uh, any uh, case. So, uh, yeah, let's find the one we just bounced. So it should be here and at the mix down library. Yes, there it is. Let's check if everything is okay with that. See, here's the first problem. Uh, Spectrasonics does this shit often. Uh, for some reason, uh, it kind of makes the notes of the instruments very short. So uh, I was the smart one not to delete those. Um, yeah, and oh, yeah. not again. Uh, yeah, so, um, 
the solution for this is to render that in real time. For some reason, uh, if you're doing that real time, uh, using real time processing, uh, it plays exactly the way you hear that. Oh, shit. Okay, I will definitely need some equalizer soon. <laughs> okay, some weird stuff happening today. Finally, this one's gonna be sounding just fine, but double checking that again. Okay, uh, yeah, Omnisphere. Yeah, the, the <laughs> here we are. <laughs> uh, well, the confession is I definitely have some cracked software here. But I'm not using that too much. Uh, but anyway, uh, correct software is not the solution to, um, well, to like totally get rid of the crashes. Uh, even if you're on Mac, even if you, have, if you even if you have the uh, uh, legal version of your DAW, that doesn't save you completely. So uh, yeah, shit happens. Sorry. <laughs> thank you that was amazing uh, yeah so Omnisphere so I will just need this one oscillator uh, only one layer uh, that's gonna be the sample we're going here dropping that to the user audio section And slowly waiting, patiently, I mean. Um, well, I wouldn't say so. It's it's definitely way more stable than uh, Windows, uh, in my experience. But uh, not like completely uh, safe, uh, crashes-wise, anyway. But, uh, well, probably some of you may know that I'm a teacher in... Uh, a music school here in Moscow and from time to time I'm taking my students uh, laptops which is mostly the Windows ones home to uh, uh, well to help them install some stuff and uh, like tweak everything so they will be able to work uh, and my experience is Mac is working way more stable not perfect but still yeah, okay, there it is. No, no, no. What the hell? Yeah. Still loading. Um, well, since it's not some uh, regular sampler, you're not just like dragging, dropping it inside and there you are play uh, straight after. You will have to wait because the math which is processing the sound here in Steam Engine is way more uh, difficult and diverse than like some other samplers. So uh, one of the coolest things about this one is that, for example, if you're taking some blocky sounds like guitar strums or piano single notes or whatever you just name it, it will really kind of preserve the first the very first attack like impulse transient if you may call it that, like that uh, and not actually pitch that uh, so it's not just pitching a a anything like well cdj willow or something but uh, 
it will be sounding way more cooler so you see uh, all these like uh, belly shimmering sounds are not pitched well they are but not too much uh, not in a stupid like straight uh, in your face way yes not our jam for today um, Yeah, now it's time to get rid of those, but I will need the MIDI, uh, so I'm just gonna drop it here uh, in the uh, scratch pad, so I'll be able to recover that from here later. So if I'm deleting those, uh, I don't need anymore. These three, like, uh, tracks and instruments, obviously. Uh, this one will stay here, and I'll just take it from here later when I'll I uh, need that later. Yeah, let's go for the granular uh, engine finally. So there it is, and it's already working uh, when I'm just turning that on. I'm already in love but uh, there was this preset made by this amazing guy uh, plugin guru you can find him on YouTube with a lot of very mm -hmm. cool um, tutorials so I took this one uh, readjusted that for myself and it literally uh, just keeps uh, the playback uh, on exactly the same place <laughs> So here we are. This is the first part. Second one. Third one. Transition chord. How cool is that? I love it. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna automate the position uh, for every chord so we can uh, we can have these following our melody and uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, that will take some time. So, uh, <laughs> get some, get some tea and relax. It's gonna be very ambient ish. <laughs> yeah, maybe there are some questions already. Спасибо большое за такой отзыв, очень приятно слышать. Uh, время сейчас такое, что мы все должны uh, друг друга чекать, как-то проведовать, заботиться. Uh, вот именно в такие моменты понимаешь, что человеку действительно нужен человек. Uh, и вот все, что в моих силах я делаю, uh, все, что в ваших силах, вот почаще звоните близким, если вы отдельно как-то изолированы. И бога ради оставайтесь дома. Uh, у вас есть широкополосный интернет и холодильник, что вам еще надо? Um, yeah, um, where do we send tracks for feedback and promo? So I'm gonna leave it here. It's gonna be a demo at intricaterecords.com. Uh, yeah, just shoot it there. If we like that, we will uh, probably come to agreement if we want to release that. Uh, but if you want me to listen to that, just, uh, well, name the... Uh, name the subject of your mail i won't prof to listen to this one and that's gonna be passed straight to me да человеку нужен человек а мне вне сферы okay uh let's go let's keep this cracking so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, like imaginally um, split these into the chords, which is gonna be four here with the small um, with the 
those small transition chords in between of the main ones and that's going to be like on the other south half of that there's going to be four more with the transition chords obviously too so i kind of schematically already know where to put the envelope but uh in between of the chords you're not just leaving everything as it is because you want that to be a uh, kind of living thing um and that's why i'm gonna uh first of all i'm i will roughly uh find the shape with the proper timings for for each of the chords and then i'm gonna play around with an envelope to see if it's gonna uh do some difference and that's and that will definitely do that for us. Yikes. Yeah, that's the perfect bottom line for this one. I think I'm gonna lose these um, chords here, transitioning chords, because if they're sounding too dirty, the bass is gonna do uh, all the job uh, with those, dun, 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 this ones, uh, and this is gonna be very like ethereal backgroundish uh, texture, so it won't do some damage for the whole structure anyway. So now uh, let's play around inside the chords here with the. Uh, envelopes which is located here horizontally for example we can try and do something like uh, like that here will definitely do the trick and that sounds way more interesting and intricate uh, than regular pads you can do on every subtractive synthesizer or FM or something whatever just uh, like 
using the nodes and the presets. This one is kind of a living thing. It's like different every time and I love this about it. So yeah, post-processing, let's do some. <laughs> I'm just checking the chat from time to time as well as uh, checking if the translation is going well. Um, yeah, everything seems fine. So yeah, let's carry on. Okay, first of all, um, let's see what's about the key here. This place with a lot of peaks. Um, they might be useful if we're like uh, playing that with uh, lots of different instruments as well, but for now I will definitely uh, well do this kind of a bell thing, just a few dBs, like three, four. And then these subs here, we're gonna definitely lose those. Well, first of all, because you won't be hearing that a lot. Uh, and that is the additional sum for the for our equation equation here uh, on the main uh, bus. So we don't want that here. So the idea is like to uh, add the elements one by one, but the sum shouldn't be like too big. And not to make that flat, uh, I will check. Yeah, fucking fuff filter does that a lot. So yeah, uh, to not to make that flat, I'm gonna just find where the body starts. So this is is gonna be something that we are cutting off. We don't need those. And I'm just gonna probably low shelf here a little bit too. Got some advice. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm definitely uh, leaving this one as it is. Um, next one is gonna be reverb. I want to, uh, I want to make that like less, um, less gr gr granular ish, uh, more soft, fluffy, whatever. Uh, all these be belly kind of uh, harmonics are okay, but not when you are actually hearing the shape of it. Like ta -ta 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 -ta. I don't want that. Okay, so this metal uh, highs here, uh, in this part, uh, uh, they're only here, but not like in any other chord. So that's gonna be uh, kind of weird. Uh, so I need to find the proper position for this part where there won't be any of those. We can allow just a tiny little bit of those, but not like for the whole chord. Like ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah, here. Let's compress that a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go farther with this. Further. Holy, I need to practice my English more often. Huge shout out for Shane54 for calling me literally every day. <laughs> this is very helpful. Uh, yeah, just give me a tiny little break I'm gonna uh, find some of my medicine uh, I'll be back in 30 seconds sorry oh it wasn't too far away yeah <laughs> the wrong one sorry <laughs> eventually I will Newcomers. 
So yeah, this one is a multi-effect com combined in like uh, one plugin. I love it, molecular, uh, like the rec system. So uh, yeah, you can initialize those by just picking the right preset, which is gonna be this one, six and one. And each of the slots uh, has some different uh, modules to uh, process the signal as well as something uh, which is the same for uh, every slot as well so as you can see the right column uh, is not changing and the middle one and the left one are so uh, well <laughs> with this one there is lots of some kind of uh, mar marketing kind of shit like for example well you can probably guess which is gonna be uh well for example duo comp that is definitely some kind of filter um but with others like plagiarism resonitarium or who, what the fuck is that <laughs> well i mean uh you just play around with that and see what uh each of those does <laughs> This one, for example, I love this one. It adds some harmonics uh, synced to the pitch. So, for example, uh, as we spoke before, uh, this seventh uh, step of those uh, key letter of the key letter is gonna be uh, C sharp. So I'm gonna try the C sharps because it will add some harmonics in this area of the frequency. This one. one's gonna be something from here for example this one's amazing too uh, it kind of freezes the signal stuttering that uh, so when I'm pressing the freeze button it gives this nice uh, feeling uh, it is still rhythmical and sync to the DAW use clock So what we're gonna do about it is we're gonna modulate the freeze button by some of the modulators we have here like LFO, step sequencer, envelope, and I have no idea what's that, uh, but probably that's uh, that is some kind of uh, well cross modulating thing like X and Y obviously the axis is. So uh, I'm gonna be fine with the step sequencer for now. Um, and I'm gonna do a sign and on the freeze button so there's literally nothing happening right now because I turned off all the uh, the whole grid here but when I'll add something this is what will happen so I'm gonna do something like bum 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 okay now the frequency for that something with a tiny little bit more of the middle highs to to make it more hearable visible if you if you want and maybe just maybe we can take the LFO and uh, modulate the cutoff filter with that to make that moving not so fast actually very very slow actually I want that like literally free. I don't want to sing that at all. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, now we are mixing the, the signal to the original one and see if it works together or not. Beautiful. I love those kind of a soundscapes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I think that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, yeah, just a tiny little bit of compression again, uh, just to flatten the dynamics, just a little bit, so all these uh, spikes you can see on Pro Q, not adding too much, but still. <laughs> Yeah, let's try that with our sub 37 lead we already did. Uh, that I turned that off because it was playing some weird stuff. Uh. I don't remember uh, turning on the arpeggiator, uh, but for some reason it's on. Okay, that's definitely not the one I did. What the hell happened? That's weird. Everything's glitching nowadays. What the hell? Okay, we uh, will have to do that again. Shit. I'm gonna leave the amplifier uh, ADSR signed to amplifier uh, like all the way up and we're gonna be uh, changing the dynamics using only the uh, filter cutoff uh, connected to these ADSR uh, I mean the opposite well you get it <laughs> Hi, hi, hello.
Okay, now the moment uh, all of us was were waiting for the kick. So uh, there is no well suggestions or advices I can give you on the kicks. I was layering my kicks by myself because I'm very very picky with the kicks. Sorry. So I'm just trying a few layers, few uh, well different approaches on the compression and that kind of stuff. And uh, this one is my. Uh, signature one. A little bit too noisy with some kind of click, but there is a simple way uh, to get rid of that. I will just take the shaper box and that's gonna be the filter. Obviously, it's gonna be one fourth and this envelope. And I'm gonna just lose all the highs uh, from the body of that, like slowly, not not, not like abrupt that, but still uh, going down here. And that will make the kick, well, more accurate than before. Maybe you won't be able to hear the difference, but believe me, there is some. And uh, again, for the sum here, uh, that's pretty significant. First of all, uh, well. It's like, what's what's this saying about that? Uh, big river is small, small river is big, something like that. Uh, so the idea is, if you will have that kind of noises, glitches, or uh, just not very accurate shaping of the sound on one channel, it's nothing. But when there are like 40 or 50 of those, uh, it's gonna be a mess. So uh, since we're kind of mixing everything uh, on a run uh, that's gonna be a wise thing to do yes the side chain um, pretty much the same shape of box but here is uh, something else okay uh, not to waste the time I did my preset which is gonna be uh, a simple side chain preset pumping kind of stuff but uh, the uh, frequencies are cross faded here and the highs are pumping not that much as you can see the mix here is a little like uh, less than on the main one it's not the trance music you're not like uh, cutting all the shit all the way down to the silence every time uh, so yeah to to be sounding a little bit more gently um, this is the way with this one a little bit more uh, so as I said this one here is to make a proper body not to be the sub base itself so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, lose everything below 100 Hertz here um, like literally almost the brick wall I'm trying to avoid uh, these amounts of decibels per octave not to uh, well not to get some resonances you will obviously be hearing lots of those uh, in a uh, high frequencies if you'll do that but that doesn't means that you won't have those here anyway so 100 for this one is too low I mean too high so I'm gonna 
get a little bit of those too, like 70 or something. Yeah, that's always depends on the key, obviously. And I'm gonna do the shelf, the low shelf here, to tame the body. This one, like very buzzy shit. Um, and this, this part is gonna be our uh, place to to fit in the sub bass, which is gonna be a little bit more rhythmic. Um, yeah, um, this is gonna stay pretty wide, uh, but the sub bass is gonna be very, very mono. I want it to be tight, uh, and okay, Trillion is my way of doing that kind of stuff. We, we can easily just take something, whatever, for example, this one, uh, this is just the souls with the click, uh, I think. Yes! But uh, something a little bit more, a uh, little bit more, a little less noisy and clicky, anyway. Ding, ding, ding. Something like that. What do we have with the souls here? Uh, clicky solid soul. Love it. So, uh, no attack click for that. No resonance. And something like. Do do, do do, do do. Yeah. Answering the questions, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll see. Похоже на Sweet Harmony, вот что за мотив, что-то такое на расслабоне. Yes, thanks for the kicks, I love my kicks so much. Uh, well, that's why I'm layering all of those by myself. Uh, любого рода вот эти вот синтезаторы, которые а-ля аналоговые, но они, да, похожи. Ну, это никогда, конечно, не будет то же самое абсолютно. И по звуку они близки скорее идейно, чем технически как-то круто. Но э, я бы советовал, да, наверное, попробовать Legend. Я бы попробовать Диву советовал очень. Э, я вот в основном не Legend беру, а Диву в тот момент, когда мне нужно что-то аналоговое. Но железа под рукой нет, например. Я. Э, yeah. 
Thanks, guys. Да, пошлю тебе демочку, посмотрим, что получится. Uh, наверное, будет прикольненько. Yes, exactly. Ear, ear and feel and that kind of stuff. For example, with this one, I was just sitting in the kitchen, as I told guys uh, before. I was just sitting in the kitchen and some kind of stuff started to play in my head and I instantly knew that it sounds like <laughs> a sweet harmony, but why not try? I mean, uh, again, like I said before, uh, everything is written already, so there is no, uh, well, nothing bad about, well, not even ripping off, but uh, it's just pretty the same chord progression. You can easily find lots of uh, exactly the same uh, chord progressions uh in a well lots of cases lots of labels at the same artists and etc etc so uh i don't think well i'm not sure if this is gonna be the next prof single or something i just want to play around uh in a very like exploring kind of mode not just uh constantly asking myself if someone's gonna um sign that if this will get me some gigs when this virus shit will finally be over uh i'm just <laughs> fooling around yeah just having fun exactly make some drums I guess um, something something simple um, okay so uh, speaking of the rhythm uh, my approach is to make that intricate weird and uh, use lots of some strange sounds inside but having a very simple yet efficient bass uh, which is gonna be the heads the, the claps and that kind of stuff and at exactly uh, the spots you we all think about like the uh, the weak spot like in between of the kicks is gonna be definitely uh, occupied by some kind of a short head I think um, yeah so these are some of my samples I'm using a lot uh, by me. this one for example I love it because it's wide uh, I love the way it's not very like uh, sharp there is not a lot of highs there like very acid ish highs but uh, it's wide that's why I love it so the acid kind of a thing is this one uh, you can actually see it's mono <laughs> check this out um, and that was made by me like literally I just did into the microphone of my laptop and it kind of works I love the way it like cutting through the uh, mix and you can like hear that uh, very well in a different circumstances so uh, this one's gonna be white and this one's gonna be very sharp or snares or something uh, usually they don't work for me at all and I'm having a huge issues of uh, find, finding a proper snare or a clap or something and probably some of you uh, noticed that I'm there are a few tracks uh, I did which has no claps or snares at all well maybe as a percussion in some cases but uh, for example someone mentioned obscure 
if you listen to that closely, you won't be able to hear this. There's no wipe like that there. And since the bass structure there uh, is very uh, Latina kind of thing, like reggaeton or something, that kind of stuff, um, uh, it don't need that. It kind of slows groove down uh, when the bass are doing that kind of stuff. So uh, speaking of the clap, for example, um, we can like take something whatever like literally any clip you can imagine uh and turn that into something magical so uh for example oliver uh this library this is one of the best you can get out there uh i'm really looking forward for the next one uh which is going to be out like in a few weeks from here probably somewhere around april 13 uh and that's going to be available at splice so uh, when it's out, I'm just buying the whole pack, not that just using some credits to buy some separate specific uh, sounds, but buying the whole thing because uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing. So yeah, this one, for example. So uh, if I'll do something like that, regular approach. That sounds, well, literally it sounds stupid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the shit out of it. So uh, I think that's gonna be more than enough. Um, yeah. So it's gonna be very, very short. And now, uh, yes, fading out, like to make it really short, something like that. So it's literally uh, nothing. And that kind of sounds are working flawlessly. I love it. sure about the name i just renamed that as oliver and that's it but probably it has something to do with the mechanisms or something i forgot yo the star in our translation here there's phone liban here hello mate um yeah what's serum doing serum is playing some kind of a bass reezy thing this one just to make things a little bit more wide uh, around the bass things, so yeah. to play that note every time I'm uh, taking the uh, track to the start for some reason. I mean the sub 37. Oh fuck. My ears were, were was just straight. Hope you you're, you're not listening to that as loud as I am right now. I love this vinyl kind of thing on the background. Ah. Okay, I'm turning that off for now because it's so annoying. This one here, for example, making that short as well. If we're using these like 16s, uh, kind of a syncoped uh, sound. It should be very short to uh, does the trick because the long ones, which is carry on playing its body uh, overlaps with the kick here, uh, sounds dirty, messy. So that's it. Yes. Okay, this one's not working. 
working. Let's try this one. Uh, okay, the problem with that is uh, this one needs to be uh, uh, swinged. So uh, I'm gonna choose the proper groove button, which is gonna be probably 14%, 40% of swing. And this is gonna make a huge difference. See, it's uh, kind of, well, too, well, too long for my taste. I want to make it just a sharp and short as the clip we're having here, so. Okay, this one's not working. Screw that. This one is in the key of the track. I uh, have no idea where to put that, but uh, key things are always good. So uh, let's just play around. Maybe just as a regular additional heads or something. Making that shorter too. I like short things. That's what she definitely didn't say. Nice. Okay, I love this one. Okay, so uh, yes, reading the messages here. Uh, first of all, no, the clap and the hi hat. Yeah, ah, you. Okay, so they're not fighting for its spot on the frequency table. Uh, first of all, bef because they're not playing at the same time, they do have the uh, frequencies, like common frequencies, but uh, since it's not playing uh, like unison, there's no difference if you will uh, leave them as they are right now. Uh, the book bass and the plucky trillion bass, yeah, uh, no, not really. Uh, well, there there is definitely something on Moog which is gonna be cutted later, but uh, it definitely not affects the sub, uh, which is only uh, the trillion thing. Uh, but we will we will return to that later and see if there is any problems anyway. Okay, this this thing is I don't I don't love you anymore. Sorry, fuck off. Uh, next, please. Uh, percussion snares or things like that. Let's see. I love the this library. This is kind of my secret weapon. I'm just like exposing that for you right now and feeling sorry just a tiny little bit somewhere. Uh, at the very bottom of my head uh, and I hate myself for that <laughs> but okay this dark garage thing from sample magic is amazing there are so many like very organic sounds like uh, the the uh, percussion uh, the snares the uh, heads and stuff like that very old school sounding stuff and if you will uh, use that as a tiny little uh, well let's call that like bits and pieces, whatever, uh, that will uh, give the mix some additional uh, well, depth. Okay, I'm using very common, common sayings right now. Uh, well, you get the idea. Also, I'm using lots of drum and bass libraries. You guys know that I produce drum and bass. I love drum and bass. Uh, and there is lots of amazing sounds you can actually get from there uh, as well as the techniques by the way I learned my serum only because I love drum and bass because uh, I was very very hungry uh, for these reasons and uh, very like intricate basses production and stuff and uh, I was learning how to do that with serum not serum itself um, so yeah I mean Okay, the bottom line here is the uh, 
idea that um, there is no such a thing as a plugin for the bass or library for the trance or library for the drum and bass. Everything is for anything. Uh, for example, Omnisphere has like thousands of amazing presets, uh, but most of most of those are barely usable, right? Wrong. You can just cut, slice, resample, uh, take a small pieces of every stupid texture you may find there, and that's gonna be something which makes you special, makes you different. Because uh, while uh, lots of people will be using uh, Spire and Silent only, you will be using something very, very interesting, different, and that's gonna uh, separate you from all these VST transfers out there. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid of experiment, use some weird shit. Uh, in case of success, uh, it definitely worth it. Yes, thank you. Boom. Yes. Love this one as well. Maybe some delayed action with this one. Nice. Okay, with this one, here's the thing. Uh, like I said, if you want to add some additional space, the room to your sound, but not pushing that back, uh, use some room reverb, like a short amounts of that, like small amounts of that with the short tails and stuff, like large size, uh, screw you. <clears throat> yeah, there it is, just the impression of the room or something, and then compress the shit out of it. That is the trick how to make sound very big very 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 big um time is a uh literally attack and release time which is going to be short on your left side and obviously long for the right side so with this very fast kind of a sounds like one shots it's obviously a better idea to turn your time somewhere to the left and the depth is a parallel compression thing, so uh, you can just add a few like different amounts of that and just see what will happen. So let's start with the 50-50 shit. So we had these, and now we have these. Yes! Sounds out of the construction right now, but believe me, uh, when we will add some different uh, loops and hats and 16s, like shit like that, it will be sounding way more, like, way better. Um, yeah. So, I made some kind of a preset for myself, which is a, uh, yeah, which is a battery with some live, um, yeah, with some live drums, like, Heads and stuff. <laughs> Arthur, can you make the uh, Rufus vocalist vibe? Then we can uh, take them out and take their place. <laughs> yes, 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 Nor, we're getting to the drums right now. Uh, I'm planning to finish the drum section today for sure. So, yeah, we'll see. So there it is, uh, that's not the loop we're going to be using, uh, obviously, but here is what we got here. Yes, HDD is still working on its way to show us the stuff, sorry. <laughs> yes, so uh, some of them are off, but we need those. So uh, combining the... Uh, live hats, uh, live drums, whatever, uh, which already has some space with uh, something very uh, like synthesized is a very nice combo. For example, we will start with this one to make some, uh, well, just the hats loop with, uh, with these ones. And then 
we will take serum and make the heads with the with the white noise only uh, and use some macros on that to make that uh, well sounding different every time we are turning some knobs there okay so I want to do that uh, to do the groove here very uh, like eight oriented not doing that not something like that but like to make everything uh, snappy and about the eights like something like that a little bit more slower than usual because my projects are uh, like well usually it's like 30 40 tracks only for the drum section with a shitload of these hi-hats uh, to your left to your right a little bit higher on the frequency range a little bit lower on the frequency range this one's a live heads, this one's a synthesized heads, etc, etc, etc. And I was always uh, feeling uh, uncertain about that approach until I once asked Mezzo if that's a, a good thing to have shitload of tracks only for your drums, like 30, 40. And the answer like uh, calmed me down a lot because he said, like, screw that, I got the same. So it's not me weirdo, everything's fine. <laughs> but in this case simplicity might be the best thing actually so uh probably uh the truth is somewhere in the middle as always actually so this is gonna be a very simple thing with a few uh tricks so when you're triggering the next note this open hat will shut up immediately Here is going to be some different stuff. And probably I'm going to switch these two. Uh, this one sounds a little bit more interesting. And uh, I think it's going to be way better for us to keep it here. Yeah, very simple. Okay, so uh, next thing is to make them a little bit more short. They're too far away right now uh, because of the original uh, reverb already applied on the samples. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, manually ADSR uh, literally uh, every one shot we have in this kit, uh, probably except for the open head. We'll see. So this one first. Uh, that's going to be main volume envelope. And all we need now is the decay to decrease that a little bit. This one next. See, just a little bit more drier. I can actually use this transient shaper thing, but uh, I don't trust these things when it comes to like automatically uh, mess with dynamics uh, of the uh, well of the audio flow. Um, it's way easier to deal with those separately and be sure that nothing will appear and uh, will turn everything into a mess. So yeah, this one. You can literally hear lots of space uh, on the background of that. And that's why uh, this loop sounds a little bit more far than the rest of the drums right now. So uh, yeah. We still need some space on that, but not like the tails uh, that long. Okay, uh, just a 
just a few more things. This one, uh, another confession is I definitely got it that this had from someone's track. I don't remember what was uh, the name of it, uh, but it's just the hat. And uh, I love the frequencies here. It's kind of a dirty thing, but um, at the same time, uh, it's not that like, it, it, it doesn't sound ugly, even if it's dirty. Uh, and also uh, you can kind of, well, feel them through the mix because of that. I can have lots of hats at the same position and they will be working together uh, cool enough to leave them as it is. So this is going to be the first thing to do. And now it's time to... Uh, so this is the bass, right? I mean, not the sub bass uh the bass like b a s e this kind of a bass uh basic elements yes that's gonna be the best way to explain that so this is gonna be the basic elements for the groove and uh th that is something you want to have in your mix first of all because this gives the people the feeling uh that this shit is pumps um now we can make everything way more intricate and sophisticated but the like straight as fuck bass uh is here and it's gonna be working flawlessly combined to all the weird things we're gonna use now so let's just play around with a few loops and see what will happen yes checking the questions yes yeah, someone's deleting <laughs> Someone's deleting the comments. <laughs> Коля, привет. This is so cool. I mean, there are lots of my friends here uh, on the stream right now. Uh, guys I love. Uh, guys I know well. Uh, as well as some people uh, I don't know. And, well, th this is so cool. <laughs> So uh, I think that's the perfect time to check out these uh, audio tent uh, libraries I bought recently. Um, you probably like the producers out there. You as a producers out there, you guys definitely seen the ads they're putting like literally anywhere, like the Facebook, the Instagram, uh, you name it. There are lots of uh, ad advertising about this company, audio tent, and. I love the stuff they're putting out. Uh, the demos they're doing sounds very good. So I, um, okay, so I think most of you know who's 8Case. It's the amazing female producer from Kiev. We were supposed to play uh, at Anjuna Beats Elevation in France, uh, actually this week. <laughs> so it's not for the virus, I yes. Fucking hell. If it's not for the virus, today is exactly the day I was supposed to play with Grum, Elon Bluestone and someone else. Who was that? Yeah, Tin Liquor at the main stage of Elevations <laughs> in France in Alps. Oh shit. Uh, so, it, it feels like we're living in some parallel universe right now. It's not the original one, but the one where shit actually hit, hit the fan. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, she was at my place a few months ago, a few months before the new year, and we uh, kind of chipped in and bought like five or three, five, whatever, libraries. And I never ever used that since, like in any of my tracks. Let's try, I mean, let's give it a try. Uh, analog melodic loops, no, not the one. Uh, Spectrum, this one was very interesting. Nice. I want this one, but not the whole thing, but just these weird 
perky uh, shit on the background. This one, for example. Bim, bloom, boom. The whole, the whole thing, like from here to there. Bim, boom, boom. Boom. Ding, doom, boom. This is a little bit shuffled, uh, but maybe, just maybe, it won't be a problem. Let's see. Yes, uh, so now not that close to each other. Uh, shorter with the fade in, something like that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so not making that too shuffleish. I'll just cut the start. Nope. Okay, so it's either this one or that one. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to overload the uh, groove with these short, small elements. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the second one here and the proper timing is pretty much everything uh, so something like that i guess with the same approach like fading that in haha <laughs> cool and this one's gonna be uh different yes Okay, this one is very out of key, so we don't need that, so uh, that's gonna be only those. And that's uh, how I usually use loops, I don't like use the whole constructions, but well, there is an exception, because if it sounds like fucking brilliant, uh, no one cares where you got that, if it sounds amazing in your mix. So uh, the result is pretty much uh, everything people cares about, remember that, and that will kinda well let's say you will uh, you won't be uh, needing to solve some moral di dilemma or something like that and in the next one I'm gonna lose this one and then we will repeat that again Okay, uh, as you can see, it works with this snare we did before, so there is no need in this one here. So probably what we're gonna do is we're gonna lose the second part completely. Uh, but we will fill the space with something here, like it's the snare uh, at the end of the second bar here, and it's gonna be something different at the second uh, at the end of the fourth bar here. Uh, so this is kind of a challenge response thing. Uh, I think that uh, making a proper arrangement is a very, very challenge response thing. It's like elements are kind of a talking together or something. Yeah, I think that's the right expression. So uh, you got the question, you got your answer. You, got, you ask the question, you got your answer with a different element. So this is what happens here. Question. Response, question, etc. etc. So, uh, okay, the uh, main idea here is to keep in mind the elements you added before uh, while adding something new. Okay, what I, what I really love about this loop is the uh, uh, something uh, clappy, snary, it's very uh, wide, this one. It kind of clicks well uh, at my left ear, if the headphones I'm wearing right now is not inverted, let me check. 
Yes, yes, yes. I, I meant the right ear. It's just the uh, I have the left channel at, in my right ear uh, and vice versa. So, yeah. Oh, nice. With some an interesting tail here. Maybe that can do something. Let's see. Yes, something like that. Okay, guys, uh, one minute break. Uh, I'm gonna pour myself some tea. Uh, I'm talking too much and get back to you immediately after. If you want, I can leave you with the groove. You can uh, just kind of feel and maybe you will have some suggestions or something like that when I'll be back. Two minutes. This break kind of give me some kind of insight. Uh, I don't think I love the idea of doing this uh, groove like eights oriented uh, anymore. I think uh, we're gonna try to make that a little bit more um, dynamic by using the sixteens and something like that. Serioshenko, привет. Yeah. So. Um, this bass still works, but I mean, we're gonna use some additional elements, which is gonna be uh, something like that. Uh, something like that. Yeah. So most of these loops are very dirty. Like you can literally hear some desync or some, uh, well, dirty subs, dirty, uh, uh, well, whatever frequencies. So uh, few, like, very few of those are actually something you could use <laughs> but uh, cutting and slicing them is a very nice idea uh, I want to <laughs> personally say uh, nor uh, this is exactly uh, what I was telling you about like a few days ago you must check if everything is very synced together uh, is that not an HD really sorry shit can i can i fix that somehow like on the fly i didn't knew that sorry i'm so sorry shit uh let me check the no i need to uh i need to turn that off before i will bring it back so yeah guys uh yeah definitely uh this is not the resolution we want to carry on so i will stop the translation for uh for a moment then i will switch the uh, resolution for the proper one and yeah just come back when i will do that it will take a few minutes so yeah 
So let's do. Check one two one two. Um, is that better now? Let me check. Okay, I swear I changed everything in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. I see. Um, parameters. Oh yeah, I see what's the, what the problem is. Uh, let me stop that for a moment again. Sorry. Uh, I see the problem. I will fix that in no time.